Let's get you the latest updates from the state of Karnataka. The crisis only persisting after the resignation of nine Congress and three JDS MLAs. Multiple meetings will be held today by both the coalition partners in a bid to really defuse the crisis and save the state government from being toppled. On Sunday, Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy chaired a Congress Two, three, JDS four, meeting. The meeting lasted till midnight during which deliberations were held on how to bring back the rebels into the party fold. However, sources told India today that the JDS leaders felt that it's unlikely that the three rebel MLAs will come back from Mumbai. It was also learnt that uh, MLAs Vishwanath and Gopalaya have been offered uh, ministerial berths while a post of board chairman has been offered to MLA Narayana Gowda. <laughs> A troubled CM Kumaraswamy returns to his state in a frenzy. Mass resignations wake Kumaraswamy from his slumber. Hectic crisis parlays in the state capital. Even Congress state in charge KC Venugopal met Chief Minister in the light of mass exodus in the state. Only Saturday when coalition crisis rocked the state of Karnataka, CM had dialed his father Devagoda and claimed that the Karnataka Gadbandan will survive. But JDS patriarch HD Devagoda raised questions at the Congress's leadership, pulling up Congress troubleshooter DK Shivakumar. JDS sought explanation on the mask resignations and asked whether the party failed to understand concerns of the rebel MLAs. Sources told India today that the Congress has floated a compromise formula to save the coalition government. The grand old party has asked ministers, having served more than six years, to step down. But the trouble only seemed to be mounting. Sources say that there might be a rejig in the coalition leadership to amend the crisis. Reports even suggesting that the CM himself could be replaced. The marathon meetings coming up, both the Congress and the BJP have held crisis meetings with their legislators. The big question remains, will this thin coalition finally snap? With Shalini Lobo, Nagarjun Dwarkanath and Nolan Pinto in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. Well, both the Congress and JDS's top brass are going all out to bring back the rebel lawmakers into the coalition fold. The rebels, however, are in absolutely no mood to budge and continue to be put up at Mumbai's Sofitel Hotel. The rebels, like Somashekar, have refused to take back their resignations and even said that they will not attend any scheduled meetings of either the Congress or the JDS. This, as both parties continue to hold several uh, huddles to defuse the crisis and save the government from being toppled in the state. All 13 MLAs are together. No question of going back, going back to Bangalore and Vitradada resignation we are all we are all 13 mlas together once again the focus is on the resort politics in karnataka really making a comeback after the resignations by these jds and congress mlas the rebels are currently lodged in mumbai's sofitel hotel and here's our ground report on the drama that's been unfolding since saturday Whenever there's a crisis in Karnataka politics, expect resort politics to follow. Ten MLAs were flown in a chartered plane to Mumbai, now holed up in a Sofitel hotel. Interesting scenes at this five-star hotel in Mumbai where all these MLAs are staying. Many of the BJP and Congress leaders are doing rounds of this particular hotel. The Congress leaders are trying to get in touch with all these MLAs so that they can take back their resignation so that, that the government stays in Karnataka. While all the BJP leaders are trying to shield all these rebel MLAs. <laughs> Congress supporters were seen protesting outside the hotel against the decision made by its MLAs to desert the party. This is something which is uh, really, really unfortunate in uh, democracy. Today, the whole democracy is on the, on the stake. If this is the case, 
if someone can buy the people, if someone can buy the, uh, you know, MLAs or MPs or whosoever, uh, that's not the uh, healthy, uh, you know, democratic way. Trouble mounting for the JDS as well, with its rebel MLAs refusing to rethink their decision to quit. Sir, CM Akela ko nahi kar sakte, sir. Alliance government hai. Okay. Congress ka interference bho jada hai. Okay. CM ko. Sir, aur main, mera skater, mera consensi ke liye, sir. Aur main unka khandan si ki tona parishan ho. Sir, wada ji ka khandan si. The hotel soon turned into the center for negotiations, with politicians from both the BJP and Congress spotted making their way into the high security zone area to reach out to the rebels. The fate of Karnataka's incumbent government lies in the hands of these rebel MLAs. Come Tuesday, if their resignations are accepted, the political dimensions are all set to change. With Saurabh Bhaktania in Mumbai, Bureau Report, India Today. Well, the Congress over the last few days is going all out to save its coalition government with the JDS in Karnataka. Senior Congress leader and the state's Deputy Chief Minister G. Parameshwara will hold a breakfast meet today with all Congress ministers at his residence. Now, this meeting is slated to take place at 9.30 a.m. Separately, a meeting of CLP has been called by Sidramaya. The party has issued a diktat to all its MLAs to attend the CLP meet or face serious consequences. However, rebel Congress MLAs have already made it clear that they will not be attending this legislative party meet. Remember, the Congress, in a bid to woo back its lawmakers, floated a compromise formula. According to this formula, the Mantris have been asked to step down after uh, a six-year stint. However, the party has failed to convince the rebels so far. The JDS Congress coalition in Karnataka hangs by a thread. 13 rebel MLAs of Congress and JDS quitting to sounding the death knell for the coalition government. But senior partner Congress is doing all it can to defuse the crisis, with a last-ditch effort to retain power. Karnataka Congress troubleshooters are holding a series of meetings and are hopeful of mollifying their rebels. See, they have called a meeting of their party uh, leaders and we will also have call a part, uh, party leaders. We will sort it out to this issue. I have confidence that uh, uh, things will cool down immediately. Everything is fine, don't worry. The government will survive. There is no threat to the government. Despite Congress efforts, massive drama is also playing out in Mumbai's Sofitel Hotel. <laughs> One of the Congress MLAs who came to meet the rebel MLAs dismissed the coalition trouble as a mere family tiff. We have talked to them and we have talked to them and we have talked to them and we have talked to them. And especially Ramesh Jarki and Rishabh, this is a family thing. This is a family thing. We have talked to them and we have talked to them and we have talked to them. But things may only deteriorate for the Congress, with upset MLA Roshan Beg also hinting at resigning. Roshan Beg was not wanted. I was not involved in the campaign. I was not involved in the strategy. Now, suddenly they have loan affection from Roshan Beg. Suddenly they are trying to contact me. Speculations are rife that more Congress MLAs could quit in the coming days. Congress MLA Pratap Gowda, holed up at the hotel, confirmed joining the BJP. When will the joining process be? Resignation accepted after 24 hours. Joining process is not accepted. Can Congress save its lone southern bastion? It seems like the coalition is batting on a very, very sticky wicket at the moment. The all-important call will be taken by the Speaker of the Karnataka Assembly on Tuesday when he appears in his office. Until then, we will have to wait and see as to how this entire Karnataka and Karnataka plays out. Reporting from Bengaluru with video journalist Sanjay, this is Akash Kolaru for you. And as the Karnataka chief minister really struggles to save his government, the BJP has upped the ante, on the other hand, against H.T. Kumaraswamy. The BJP's claim that the chartered plane that was used by the chief minister 
belonged to Jindal Steels, which has been in the news since the last month over the land sale in Balari of Karnataka. Pointing fingers at the Chief Minister, the BJP's Karnataka spokesperson said that the play in Monet is Pat was acquired by JSW Steel and went on to question Kumaraswamy asking whether he was indulging in quid pro quo. The BJP will be holding a meeting uh, of its legislators today, that's at 5 p.m. at its office in Bengaluru, to discuss the political crisis that's currently playing out in the state. The party, remember, has already denied its role in the resignations of Congress, JDS, MLAs. The Congress and JDS, on the other hand, have been quick to point fingers at B.S. Yadurapa, referring to this as another form of Operation Kamla. <laughs> Well, the Karnataka political crisis is really just the latest in a series of jewels to opposition parties after the debacle in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. From Andhra Pradesh to Bengal, Gujarat to now Karnataka, a jittery opposition and in fact jittery opposition lawmakers are either contacted, approached or themselves really making a beeline for the BJP. It is an exodus that mortally threatens Congress JDS government in Karnataka. With 13 of their MLAs bolting, the coalition is tottering at the brink. The sinking feeling for opposition is eerily similar from other parts of India. The TDP is facing decimation in Andhra and Telangana, with its lawmakers making a beeline for BJP after Naidu's crushing poll defeat. More than 18 MLAs of uh, Telugu Desam party and uh, almost more than 20 MLCs of the same party are in touch with uh, BJP leadership. Frauds committed by Chandra Babu Naidu during his uh, last five years tenure definitely I am confident that he will be uh, sent to jail. In Andhra Pradesh too, the TDP faces a defection threat after four Rajya Sabha MPs joined the Safran party. Senior leaders of the BJP now claim that at least 18 TDP MLAs and over 20 MLCs are in touch with them and ready to join the BJP. Similarly, in Bengal, a large number of TMC MLAs and corporators are jittery. Before the Lok Sabha elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while campaigning in Bengal, had claimed 40 TMC MLAs were in constant touch with the BJP. Now that the party is on a membership overdrive in the state, the Trinamool Congress camp is clearly unnerved that many Trinamool Congress leaders might jump the ship and may be in direct contact with the BJP leadership. Alarm bells are ringing for Congress in Gujarat as well where two of its MLAs voted for BJP in the recent Rajya Sabha polls before quitting. Aya Ram Gaya Ram ki ek nai definition hai. Mischievously orchestrated defections in India, MODI. Is India moving towards being opposition mukt? Bureau report, India Today. And away from the crisis in Karnataka, the Congress is staring at another problem, and that is the leadership crisis within the party, which only seems to be deepening with each passing day. After Rahul Gandhi resigned as Congress president, now the party's two young faces, Milind Diora and Jyotir Aditya Sindhya, have quit from the party posts. While Diora was the Mumbai Congress chief, Sindhya was holding the charge of General Secretary for UP West. However, Milindiora's resignation has clearly not gone down well within the party as senior leader Sanjay Nirupam, who was formerly the Mumbai Congress chief himself, has questioned his intent. In a tweet, Nirupam, while referring to Milindiora, asked whether the resignation is uh, in fact a ladder to climb up to the post at a national level in the party. This, as sources have told India today, that Milindiora may move to Delhi for a national role in the Congress. Nirbam also trashed Diora's recommendation of setting up a provisional setup of three leaders to run Mumbai and Congress. It's not the first time that Nirupam and Milind Diora squared off. Milind Diora replaced Nirupam as the Mumbai Congress chief after he openly said that Nirupam was failing to keep the party together in the state. Three member committee, three members 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 committee, three members
ये पॉलिटिकल पार्टी है कोई कॉर्पोरेट हाउस नहीं जो बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर चलाएंगे एक पार्टी को लीड लीडर ही करता है फ्रंट पे मोर्चे पे तैनात होकर के Moving on, security forces are on high alert as separatists have called for a shutdown on the third death anniversary of terrorist Burhan Wani in Kashmir. In reaction, authorities have suspended mobile internet facilities in four South Kashmir districts. Heavy deployment of security forces has been made all along the Jammu Srinagar National Highway. This highway is being used, remember, by pilgrims of the ongoing Amarnath Yatra, which started on July 1st. Burhan Wani was killed on July 8, 2016 in Kokarnag area of Anantnag district in a gunfight with security forces. Wani's death was followed by Kashmir-wide unrest that lasted for over 4 months. Well, after surging to the top of the points table with just one defeat in the league stage, India will face New Zealand in the first semi-final. It will not be the first time that Virat and Kane Williamson will come to face face to face, leading their respective teams in a World Cup. Men in blue have played every team but one in this World Cup. Had it not been for the rain gods, India would have tested New Zealand too. As luck would have it, India will get that opportunity to take down Black Caps. Just that the stage would be a semi-final. While Team India has been able to maintain the same tempo throughout the tournament so far, New Zealand have lost the momentum with three back-to-back -back losses. Absolutely brilliant to see uh, the way team have played throughout the World Cup, uh, and uh, there was no doubt that they will. Uh, not go in the semi-final or the final. You know, we always believe that uh, this team have got a lot of potential to win the cup, and uh, they have definitely shown uh, on the <coughs> on the on the park that what they can achieve, and uh, they have been tremendous. Not for the first time, Virat Kohli and Kane Williamson will walk down for the toss against each other in a World Cup semi-final. In 2008, the very same two individuals were leading their teams in the Under-19 World Cup, and it was Virat who had the last laugh that day. Jadeja, Tim Saudi, and Trent Bolt were all in those Under-19 teams, and in Manchester, they will once again be a part of this historic team. The balance of this Indian team makes it a strong unit. Their top order has been firing consistently. Rohit, in particular, is sitting on a heap of runs and records. I'm not here for records. I'm here to play cricket. <laughs> I'm here to play and score runs and uh, lift the cup. Ah, not, not, not yet. If you win the World Cup, then probably I would. If not, then I can't because eventually winning the cup, winning, winning the game is important. Uh, you know, no, no matter how many runs you score in the tournament or how many hundreds you get, you don't feel satisfied. Bowling is India's another strength with quality and variety in both pace and spin departments. On the other hand, New Zealand's batting has been letting them down, especially in the last few matches. They still have the pace attack to test the best batsmen. But their batting, except for Kane Williamson, seems to have lost some steam. Manchester, of course, uh, uh, as overwhelming favourites to meet uh, New Zealand. New Zealand finishing at four, a team that's slightly on the downhill. Uh, India, of course, is rising and shining. But I'm looking forward to the first game, ninth Old Trafford. Uh, let's write a new story at the Old Trafford. Let's go to Lords. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.